I mean, thanks in partly to you. There's been a lot of like death threats, uh, a lot of really nasty messages. Um, but you seem kind of proud about the press that you've received. I mean, your profile picture is showing holding up a newspaper with you in the headline. Yeah, a newspaper where they just basically lied about me. Um, I thought it's it's. Uh, it's, it's funny that they, they just continue to make up these like lies and libels. Journalist Taylor Lorenz sat down with Libs of TikTok creator Chaya Rachik, who uh, has been embroiled in controversy for a while now. She's known for exposing the sexualization of young children in schools through things like LGBTQ inclusive and uh, sex education books. Now, some of her posts have uh, also spread some dishonest claims about hospitals that provide gender affirming care. So there's been a lot of back and forth in the media between Rachik and those who have made allegations against her. Uh, Taylor Lorenz is one of the more prominent journalists who has covered her. And she's also the person who revealed the identity of Chaya Rychik as the individual behind the creation of Libs of TikTok. Now, look, they talked about a whole host of issues, the transgender issue. They've also talked about great replacement theory. But I wanted to focus in on one specific part of their conversation because they talked about the responsibility of the press to avoid inciting violence against others. So her and Lorenz got into a back and forth about whether the media and journalistic figures should be held accountable when their reporting leads to threats. So Chaya told Taylor Lorenz that her reporting had actually led to threats against her. Let's take a look. I've seen a lot of people go from sort of a very low key life, which I would imagine you're living before, to a massive amount of attention and, you know, money and powerful people around you. How has that affected you? Um, like I said, uh, some safety issues. Um, in part, thanks to, uh, to you and to some other members of the media. So I thought that was an interesting moment because she's making allegations against Taylor Lorenz and other media outlets that have been critical against Libs of TikTok. At the same time, of course, there are allegations against Libs of TikTok in inciting violence against certain educators and certain hospitals. We had covered the multiple bomb threats that had been sent to Boston Children's Hospital. And we've got some other details to get into, some other statistics to get into in just a moment. But I do think that this issue is a little more complicated and not so black and white. I think if you're super partisan, you'll see it as black and white. But Chaya Rajic sees what she's doing and what Libs of TikTok is doing as part of the media. Obviously, Taylor Lorenz works in you know legacy media, so she sees herself as a journalist. And so if Taylor Lorenz is, um, Reporting things that leads to threats against Chaya Rachik, is she responsible for that? We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members, and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. No, and so let's try to find some standards here because mm -hmm. it's easy for us to say we don't like Chaya Rachik, we like Taylor Lorenz. So Chai Rachik is guilty and Taylor Lorenz isn't. But that's not a standard, that's not principled, right? So do I dislike Chai Rachik deeply? Now why, is it because I'm biased? No, it's because a lot of the things she said turn out to be completely untrue. She's fomenting anger and violence towards hospitals and then kind of bragging about it. Like not checking herself at all, not doing it in a responsible way. And is she against the LGBTQ community? I mean, who are we joking? Of course she is, of course. She loathes them and she drives enormous hatred towards them. Now, okay, when you say about a hospital something they are not doing and you see that they got a bomb threat, you cross two of the standards that I would propose. One is you have to be truthful and the other is that you have to do it in a responsible way. So, for example, now flip it on us, right? Because I always say, think about the shoe on the other foot, which we almost never do in politics, right? So some people have said, hey guys, you guys talk against the cops when there was all those police abuse stories and then some cops got shot. So is that your fault, right? Well, first of all, 
are did the things that we said about the cops were they true? Yes, they were absolutely true, right? So then if you say, well, even if it's true and it's a per person or entity in power, you should not say it. No, I don't agree. So by the way, that's the same standard used against Israel, which is, yes, all these terrible things that Israel did is true, but don't say it because it's Israel and you're not allowed to say it about Israel. I don't agree. I don't agree. I can say it about the cops, I can say it about our government, I can say it about Israeli government. So but it has to be true. And the second part is we we don't do what a lot of the right wing does, which is, hey, you got your second amendment rights, you got to do something about it. You got to grab that, you know, gun and hey, what do you say? It's against government tyranny. They're egging people on, egging people on, not all the time, but a lot of the time. Whereas we tell people all the time, don't, don't ever do any violence. It's that's dumb. the key. That's well, the key. Yeah. To me, that's the key, Jenk, because We've been very clear in speaking out against any violence. In fact, you gave the example of our coverage of the war in Gaza. On multiple occasions, we've been clear that no hatred, no discrimination, no none of your ire should be directed toward civilians, Jewish Americans, and we've spoken out against the anti-Semitic attacks that we've been seeing increase in the country. But you can't you can't put a muzzle on journalists, you just can't. Because people need to express the reality, the truth of what's happening in the world. Sometimes tempers flare, sometimes you get very passionate. And I'm personally trying to do better in keeping the temperature down and being you know, as clear and factual as possible. But it's difficult sometimes, right? You get super heated about some of the stuff that's in the news and I can understand that. But I also wanna note one other thing. Look, there is something like there is something called free will, right? And so if someone is going to carry out an act of violence because they're so heated about a story they heard, is the journalist responsible for it or is the person who carried out the violence responsible for it? Well, it so First of all, it doesn't have to be binary. The person is obviously responsible for it that did the act, right? In terms of the journalist, again, was it truthful and how did you frame it? Right. So for example, let's take a super extreme example. Let's say the so-called journalist said, okay, that guy, let's say that it was even truthful. That guy did something that my audience doesn't like, go get the son of a bitch, make sure he's hurt. Well. No, that you can't say that. That's crazy. That's in fact, that's illegal, right? So, does it depend on how you say it? Of course, it does, right? But that's and hence we go back to what we've been talking about here. Every instance we tell you guys, hey, when you do violence, that is a surrender. That is an ideological surrender, saying, "I'm my position sucks, so I'm going to have to resort to physical violence because I'm so dumb I can't defend my position with ideas," right? But do you see the right wing doing that? I almost never see them say don't do anything violent. Like from time to, after someone's like being killed because they were so egging on, they might do like one tiny caveat and then go back to second amendment rights, government tyranny, right? And all of it, Eric, you're butchering the children. Aren't you gonna do something about it? Aren't you gonna do something about it? Like right? Rachel would give herself a lot of cover if she just simply said, I denounce these bomb threats that are being sent to Boston Hospital, Children's Hospital. Please stop doing this. This Guys, is terrible, right? Like bare minimum. So easy. So so easy. Like so when cops get killed, I denounce it. Are you insane? Why would you kill a cop? That's nuts. That's not even the cop that did anything wrong. That, that's somebody's kid. That's somebody's uh, that might be trying to protect the community. You're shooting a random person. Are you nuts? Look at how easy that is. You've right? spoken out. Uh, we've both spoken out against uh, swatting. Uh, Tim yeah. Pool getting swatted multiple times, Terrible. spoken out against that. So I don't agree with Tim Pool on 80% of stuff, right? But swatting him and putting his life in danger, are you nuts, right? See how simple that was, Ch Chaya Richard still won't do it. Won't tell her audience, stop doing bomb threats, you morons. Because so, she enjoys the coverage, she gets, she loves it. She loves being this in the spotlight. Oh, everybody's talking about. It. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Do whatever the hell you want, as long as I get famous. Keep it real. That's the only reason you're doing it. I don't, look. I I disagree with that. I think. Oh, that she's, you're right. She might also be a lunatic. She's she's deeply, deeply socially conservative, and that came through in this conversation. Which you should watch the entirety of it. Literally, if we covered everything they were talking about, it would take up the entire show. This was just a, an element that I thought was really interesting because how do you do your job 
as factually and responsibly as possible, right? Where you're sharing important information with people that is accurate. And if it's something that could rile people up, how do you do so in a way to ensure that it doesn't incite someone to do something stupid and violent? Now, I do wanna go to what we've seen as potentially a result of some of what Rachik has posted with libs of TikTok. So libs of TikTok's tweets have reportedly led to harassment, bomb threats and death threats dozens of times. So last year school systems reported receiving bomb threats after libs of TikTok highlighted them to its 2.6 million followers. According to a vice report, Rachik targeted 42 school districts and their employees in September of 2023 alone with various allegations of indoctrinating children to be LGBTQ plus and exposing children to sexually explicit material. Out of the 14 districts that responded to Vice's request for comment, all but three said they received bomb threats less than a week after they were featured on Rachik's feeds. In the fall of 2022, Rachik posted false information about Boston Children's Hospital claiming surgeons were performing hysterectomies on children, which was not true. After she posted about it, the hospital received a number of bomb threats. And then earlier this month, NBC News identified 33 instances starting in November of 2020 when people or institutions singled out by libs of TikTok later reported bomb threats or other violent intimidation. The threats, which on average came several days after tweets from libs of TikTok, targeted schools, libraries, hospitals, small businesses, and elected officials. 21 of the 33 threats were bomb threats, which most commonly targeted schools and were made via email. Now, law enforcement agencies in at least 13 jurisdictions also reported receiving FBI assistance to find the responsible person or people. Taylor also asked Chaya about these reports and here's how their exchange went down. A recent NBC investigation found at least 33 instances where you posted about a specific person or institution and that person or institution was immediately bombarded with death threats and violent threats, um, including bomb threats, other violent threats. That's a pretty significant correlation. How do you, you know, what are your thoughts yeah, on Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but I got like tons of death threats um, the past this week after the entire media machine came after me. So are they responsible for those? I don't think that there is um, the same correlation. Are you receiving bomb threats? I'm, I'm receiving death threats like, hi, I'm gonna come murder you. Yeah, and I definitely sympathize with you there. Like I get those literally the article goes live and then I get those threats. I get the same thing when a Fox News article goes live. So are the, is the journalist responsible? The journalist who was the article? So real quick before you jump in, Jenk, Lorenz did counter by pointing out the fact that Chaya is doxing private citizens. I thought that was an interesting point. Let's hear her out. But I actually have a disagreement with Taylor Lorenz here. Let's watch. I'm wondering kind of how you think about taking these obscure people, right? Because you and I are both public figures and I, I imagine you and I can both, we have a high tolerance, right, for what we, what we can handle online. Say you're taking a private citizen, you know, a gay teacher, for instance, in a small town, and you post about that person, and then that person subsequently, who had no media presence prior, receives pretty violent threats. How does that make you feel? We need it. We need to answer the the question first, though. Is the is the journalist responsible for actions that have to happen after? So you consider sort of. Your posts about private citizens, incendiary posts, you consider that journalism? I'm an independent journalist. So where I disagree with Taylor is that she's completely forgetting about the fact that we had a year and a half, maybe two years of incessant Karen stories. Right, of which I'm guilty of covering on this show. And I've talked about how I've since regretted doing that. Because even if they're behaving poorly on a video that's been posted online, they're still private citizens. And many of them had everything destroyed in their lives. They lost their livelihood. The Central Park Karen has like moved out of the country as a result. She wasn't a public figure. So you can't make these allegations against you know, Chaya Rachik and pretend like the same behavior isn't true of the left as well. Well, in my opinion. Yeah, but the right wing is a lot more 
uh, like the left wing could get you fired, right? And so that's the cancel culture people uh, complain about, and that is definitely true. And they can shame you publicly, that is definitely true. And mm -hmm. those are all very, still very concerning, right? Um, but the right wing threatens to kill you 10,000 times more. Uh, that's just a fact. Uh, so I don't, I don't know if she, uh, the Central Park lady or other Karens got death threats. I, that's she totally did. She okay, went into hiding and left the country. Okay, that's incredibly dumb to do that. You see how simple that is to, for us to say that, yeah. right? So look, Chaya Reichick's a terrible person. She doesn't care that they're getting the uh, death threats. She's never condemned a death threat. So she says, I get death threats too. Well, then shouldn't that make you more sympathetic to the children at the hospital that they had to evacuate because of the bomb threat? That the hospital got, no, they cared, me, 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 me. And then she pretends she cares about the welfare of children. She never talks about, or I don't know about never, but certainly does not emphasize the Boy Scouts or the Catholic Church. If you know, she does, a oh, gay person did this, gay person did that, gay person did this, right? A trans, drag, etc. Well, if you want to do that about the Catholic Church, you, you could do decades of videos about all the kids that they abused, but she doesn't want to. Because she hates gay people, and that's her actual agenda. She's a total giant liar. Now, does that mean that you should do death threats against her? Of course not. You'd be an idiot to do that. If you can't defeat Chaya Rychik with your ideas, then you should retire. Okay, so there's a difference in saying don't do the wrong thing. Let's make sure that everybody's okay while we battle fervently on ideas and ideology. And, and go, oh, did they get a bomb threat? Oh, they got a death threat, did they? Oh, I don't care, it's not me, <laughs> And that's her entire attitude. On the, on the Karen stuff, guys, I, to, speaking of standards, I talked about this uh, you know, a little while back. I'm calling them civilians now, okay? Like we have to have a different standard for civilians and people in power, right? So I would even say we're in power to some degree because we have we're part of the media, right? So we're not civilians. The, yeah. the politicians are not civilians. So you say all sorts of crazy stuff about us. Don't do death threats. Don't do that's crazy, right? To us, to anyone else, not to the right wingers in media, not to the Republican politicians. Don't do it to anyone, okay? But you want to harshly criticize us? That's fair game. But when we all turn and shame a civilian, whether they're on the left or the right, it's too much. It's too much. So you point out what they're doing wrong so we can fix things, then we move on and it shouldn't be a life sentence. So here we are trying to be as fair as humanly possible. Do you get the same sense from Chaya Reichik and the right wing? I don't get that same sense. And by the way, I often don't get the same sense from mainstream media either.